Let's have a look at performance. Uh, performance manifests itself in, in many ways. We have latency, we have throughput, and we have response. Now, uh, some of those have um, are addressed in by programming, and some of them are, are um, out, outcomes of the architecture. Different performance measures could be applied to different parts of the system. Now there are some systems where you don't wait. We're talking about this kind of uh, performance, um, uh, where it's it's a real-time system, and whatever the system does, it has to keep pace with the real-time events. Um, achieving performance, uh, well, aside from you know throw more, throw a faster CPU at it, um, if you if you want to maximize the performance in a particular system, you write a small, tight piece of software. All right. You minimize the low speed interfaces so you, you have less inter-process communications, less uh, distributed processes. Monolithic systems are fast, um, but they are really hard to maintain. Um, the original airline reservation system was called a Sabre system and it was written essentially one great big module of assembler code. Um, it certainly was very fast, but it was impossible to maintain. So improved CPUs, uh, better languages, better architecture have uh, largely overcome the need to write those large monolithic assembler systems. Now many large web services are moving toward a micro a microservice architecture. So it's um, a little bit confusing uh, to try and achieve performance. In, in some ways and in some places you really ought to consider um, making a, a small, tightly coupled uh, system and in other circumstances you would be looking toward building a um, loosely coupled, very modular system out of, out of microservices and simply scaling it up. So there are different tactics for achieving performance depending on the, the specific circumstances that you're dealing with.